I was thinking from the Bible to Bracken to, to Billy Elliot, there's always been this fascination with the father-son dynamic and also the youth blossoming into the butterfly is, is a great kind of theme. Was it Havana in 1996 that all of this sort of came into mind or was that a later kind of development between the two of you, that this particular story? Well, from when the initial thing that I got in Havana in 96 was, or in Cuba, it was actually St. Vegas, ah, right. was... Um, uh, I just fell in love with the performances, the type of performances and the emotional power. And sort of an idea for a story came, you know, maybe five or six years later and it was a very, very loose, sketched out story of a father-son. Basically, I went to see a club in Havana and uh, the family of uh, the main, perf uh, this performer had built a theatre in the back garden of their house for him yeah. to perform in. And I always felt, okay, that's the sort of, it's an incredibly strong uh, gesture of, of love and affection to their, their son. And that began the idea of, OK, what's the relationship between the performer and the family and the father in particular? But it wasn't particularly sketched out. And then I went and talked to Mark. And for you, Mark, I don't know whether there was certain kind of, I don't know, like you know, goals that you had in mind, certain kind of overall uh, impressions that you wanted to make, a, a sense of, of, of what you, when you started out, what you were going to end up with? Well, I mean, one of the things was uh, I was interested in uh, both machismo and the, the kind of male effeminacy. I was interested in those two things and them being the both uh, ends of a spectrum of masculinity and uh, also playing effeminacy as strength rather than as being something laughable or, or weak. I was interested in those. And then kind of went to Havana with an open mind really. There was the, the germ of what you had seen and blah, blah, blah. And then we got there and really we, our, our minds about the story and everything were changed by who we encountered and what we encountered when we got there. And we stayed open to talking to drag queens, interviewing them, taking their stories down. And, you know, a lot of it came back to sort of their primary relationship with their fathers and what had happened when they'd become drag queens and what that meant to their fathers and how hurt they were and maybe, you know, some of them being thrown out of home or physical violence and blah, blah, blah. So all of that. And then I took that notebook home and I wrote up a story when I got home and passed it to, to, to yourself and, and that was where it came from. And then it constantly got refined every time we went back to Havana, every time we went and stayed there for any length of time. It constantly ah. got refined. Yes. <coughs> All right. I, you know what? I, I, I'll just say, well, I don't mind the noise unless it just kills the voice. I think we can kind of let it be okay, that it's okay, a natural, because we usually kind of let it all run as one edit and, and as one sort of like live kind of, you know, okay. broadcast. So, yeah. 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 Well, if somebody could mime out the noises though in the background, could you pretend you're working like on the, Could you hang a picture behind us there just for a second? If I got an electric yeah. toothbrush, it would cover everything. <laughs> I could just start putting yeah. in your own feel, fillings. We'll just have a table of oh, devices. You can just figure out which noise you might be making now. Yeah, maracas, the whole works. <laughs> that idea too that, that we're, we're dealing with, as one character says, the most beautiful slum in the world, that, 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 that the beauty that you've got on display and yet the poverty and that sort of mix of how you portray that, I don't know, we should give a shout out to the cinematographer, beautiful job. Yeah, well, Carl, Carl Waters right. shot it, you know, and he did do a fantastic yeah. job. Yeah. But it, it's like a, it's a funny place, uh, Havana, because it's got this very unique thing where you've got a sense of sophistication and a civic society, and, um, but in a context of poverty or side by side with this incredible poverty. Mm. And you don't get those th two things together generally. I mean, you get them together in a sense, you'll have a, a very you know, a wealthy crowd and a very poor crowd, whatever. But in this is mixed together in some, some way. So in a poor neighborhood, you know, you, you get a kid who's um, you know, trying to be an opera singer and, uh, or you have a real sense that the people are, are educated and aware, self-aware in that place. And that's an unusual quality about it. Um, um, and I think then beyond that, I suppose, it's a, such a fantastic place because uh, that sophistication visually uh, and architecturally has faded and, uh, let's say, grown old. But it's grown old uh, with a patina on it that creates this beautiful uh, world to photograph. I was thinking Joe and Joanna Sixpack, seeing the name, the poster, getting a glimpse of the trailer, they're going to think of two words, Al, Madover. Is there any, was there any part of you thought, okay, we have something to avoid here? Woody Allen doesn't own New York, the Beatles don't own Liverpool. Yeah. It's not a case of we can't go there, but just that idea that vaguely 
there's a sort of a, he, this is a world that he, he tends to inhabit. Was, was that a... One of the things was <clears throat> we wanted to, to put drag queens in there, but also keep it kind of hitched to the kitchen sink in a, in a <laughs> way. Right. Um, and to, to try and see, can you put those two things together? Um, his are more high concept and high camp uh, yeah. as well than, than what we wanted to do. And um, and I think we always knew that if we caught the naturalism of the of the the story and the characters, that the world of the drags would bring a theatricality to it that would sort of just infuse it with great energy. But we didn't. I didn't look towards Almodovar in particular, and didn't watch his films or anything around it. I suppose there is, as I said, a universality to it, and, and this could be just, you know, it could be a kid in Kilgarvan who doesn't want to vote for Healy Ray, and, and the whole, the, there's that all that kind of difficulty of dealing with what his father thinks about that. And mm -hmm. so I don't know whether commercially there was any kind of thoughts about, well, we kind of need to hit certain tones here. That you know, I don't know whether that was a consideration because obviously every Irish film makes billions, and you are both yes. millionaires, but you know, yes. you like to dress down for interviews and stuff. Yes. But but it's a, was that a consideration? How do how do we how will this work commercially for us? I think it's commercial suicide to start with. Anyway, you know what I mean. You're going to have had to make to make a film about drag queens. You said the Irish film board at the time. No, no, no. no. There is so, but I mean, it's not. I mean, there was nothing you could do to the proposition that would soften it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Like maybe there's a degree of arrogance at, at the heart of it. But while on one part of my brain knows this isn't a great commercial proposition and that's when you're trying to finance it that mm. keeps coming back to you but something inside myself is saying make it and they will come make yeah. it and they will come yeah. you know and in a way and you have to sort of if it's interesting enough to you to do and you have to just hang on to that kernel of a thing what is it that I want to show what is it that I want to show to people and if I do it really really well uh, they'll want to come and see it and after that I don't think you can second guess yourself too much you know not in a if you're making a genre film or you're making something else, you, you obviously can refine that. But I think when you're making something like this, you just have to be true to what you wanted to do. Well, I don't know whether it was a Telluride Film Festival last September. It kind of got a great response and you know, one of the favourites amongst the audiences and all that. Was that a key moment that you sort of felt, oh, well, OK, this, this is what I thought it was. This is working the way I thought it was or whether that's already in you that you... Getting into Telluride. I mean, yeah. I was so excited when that happened. I wasn't allowed to tell people for weeks. No, it was, it was agony. It has to be ah, but right. it's such a great festival. And it's it's a real boutique festival. They only show twenty five films. Some of those aren't premieres. They're they're retrospectives or blah blah. And uh, it just felt like we'd been given a nod of like, y you know, you're okay. And it was yeah. really lovely. You get a, a great cinephile audience there. You also get great press out of it. Yeah. And uh, that kind of launched its American. Launch, uh, there was very much a sense, you know, after the first screening, you know, I came out and you know nobody knows about this film. I haven't. Hadn't seen it with an audience at that stage. Hadn't even had a cast and crew, so you come out and gradually people start coming up to you, and then more people coming up, and then people are t in tears, and and then people are saying, "I'm on the foreign language Oscar foreign language committee. Mm. We think you should get this film mm. into foreign language." <laughs> and so within ten minutes, yeah. so sort of you see, okay, its history isn't written, but its potential begins to unfold, <laughs> and it was thrilling to know that you'd made something that was affecting people and that they were getting excited by it. And Telluride really delivered on that. I know, I've only got one minute left. So I was, I was thinking, for, in both your cases, you both made two perfect films, really. I went down and Adam and Paul, they're very, very loved. They're always going to be loved. Is there part of you that sort of, you know, almost feels like there's, there, it's a sort of a, a, a thing you have to live up to? Or are you just so happy to have something on your CV that lots of people kind of, I'm sure, still say to you, Love that film. I, I don't know how that sort of works it's for, for a career. beloved child to me. That's what I think. <laughs> uh, you know, you can have other children, but you still have your beloved child. <laughs> um, I am so proud of Adam and Paul for sure. Like I, I, I love it very I, dearly. I don't know. Peter Mullen and people like that just love. I went down. There's a real kind of you know love within the film world, especially of. Yeah. of I mean, do you find that that fills you with pride, or do you think, well, that was yesterday, I really need to... Yeah, it's funny, I mean, it, it does, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. very happy, but at the same time, another part of you moves on from it. Yeah. But what I don't move on from is I remember, and the same is actually true of Eva, I remember just thoroughly enjoying it and feeling I was in the zone making it, you know? That you sort of, all the elements, the way you want them to come together, are coming together, and that, 
is ex for me the process of making is is more important really actually than the the finished film uh, because that's how you live your life and you know living your life is more important for me yeah. than anything else and so the experience of making that and it's funny watching you know Adam I remember uh, where I was living at the time when Adam and Paul came out and uh, the local kids around started quoting the lines <laughs> and from the film and that was one of our ambitions when we made I went down was that we want to make a film that people locally quote the lines, that it leaves the cinema and goes into the life of the city You're and the place around in you. The Batman. So, yeah. hey. But you, do you know what I mean? That, and so I think in a funny way, um, and you can you can sort of have an ambition with that, but obviously you can't make that happen. And I think we're both very lucky that we got a big yeah, experience I mean. where that happened. Really. And you're lucky to make another great film too, so that's yeah, kind of handy. Sure. Lovely to talk to you, lads. I can let you Thanks go back to your drilling and DIY and all that.